from the depth instant tutorial you're watching Jimadesma instant tutorials today we will take a look at multi-stage fuel engines basically how to recycle your exhaust gases into another engine block this little tutorial would be based on our previous fuel engine tutorials so do check them out the idea is basically like this we will build a small engine which will provide our basic power needs and be very efficient. So we basically build a supercharger engine like this one. There we have some exhausts on it and of course this being a supercharger engine will need to drag down the maximum RPM to 0.4.5 something like that. Now the purpose of this first efficient little standby engine is to have a very low material per second. You will need to make this engine big enough so that it can cover your basic standby costs. To simulate this we have a sensor scrambler. So we have a power output of 362. So uh, let us simulate this by saying that this craft has a standby cost by 360. This is the extra power that we'll need later. The purpose of this first engine is to take care of all of the standby costs for moving and just existing. So the craft will just use this engine when it's uh, standing by. This means we will go into basics here under priority and drag up the priority to 1. So this is the engine that's always getting used. Now here's the thing. We have 4.5 exhausts coming out of here. And we can recycle this. And this means we will build another engine. Alright, so there are carbureted turbochargers and they are cylinder turbochargers. And they both have this little hairdryer looking part at the top. But the thing is, these cylinder turbochargers can be connected up to a, a cylinder directly, just like this. And now, this little thing sticking out here is the exhaust. Now, we can't use these for this application, so we'll need to stick with carbureted turbochargers. They, however, cannot be connected up in this way with a little hair fan piece, because even though it looks like it's connected, it is actually not. You'll need to connect an exhaust to the bottom, or the side here, to it. So even though it might look like we're using cylinder turbochargers, we are not. We are using the carbureted turbochargers and we will connect up the exhausts manually to all of them. If this or this will be the input or output of the turbocharger, you'll have to decide. It doesn't matter, but you'll have to select one. So I will make the sides the input and then we'll take out the output from the bottom here. Alright, so they might look a little bit weird and you'll get a hang of them after you use them a while. So remember that the bottom or this side is a input or output. And you need to select which is the input and the output by just connecting them up and they kind of work. But, uh, you know, just make sure that you don't connect it up in a way so some of the exits is both an output or input. Now we also have this little piece that's connected to the cylinder and do remember this is carbureted turbocharger so this is not connected to the cylinder. It's only the cylinder turbocharger that does this and we can't connect onto exterior um, exhausts into this system. So of course this is a closed system and we will connect up more exhaust to this to get recycled. So basically, even though it might look like this is connected to the cylinder, it means that we need to have a physical straight pipe out of every cylinder to uh, provide sufficient cooling. It's kind of confusing, you know, uh, because the regular carburetor turbocharger and the cylinder turbocharger has the same model, but they don't have the same connections. So that's why I repeat this. In any case, uh, we're now running and we should now connect up our extra power. So uh, let's pretend we're in battle, for example. Now we need all more power than we need by standby. So here we can see this engine here, it produces um, 500 extra power and uh, we have all the exhaust going into this so we can see 1.5 pressure reused, exhaust pressure used 2.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0
This one is 5.6, it depends on how you connect them up, and this one is 1.5. So what we would basically do is to inject these exhausts from the other engine into this system. And we simply do that by connecting it up. And now we can see the exhaust from the previous engine now goes into this pipe and gets into this inline turbocharger. And now 5.85 of 6 pressure is used. You can't use more than 6 uh, exhaust pressure. And when this uh, exhaust pressure has been inputted into a carburetor, like this for example, we can see that we have 14 exhausts uh, coming out here. We cannot, unfortunately, connect it up to a second turbocharger. Um, it just doesn't work, you can see here. Even though the exhaust is passing through this thing, we're not reusing pressure. So we need to divide it up uh, evenly for the first use, because we can't reuse already used uh, exhaust for some reason. So that's basically how it works. We just hook it up into the system and let them use. So for example, if this engine would have been a lot larger, we might need to have split up this exhaust pipe so that the exhaust can be inputted into more of the turbochargers. And that is something we could do. The power per material is 530 for this one. And the power per material for this one is 780. So this one is like better. But this one is still reusing the other engine's exhaust, so this should be priority zero. And if we wanted to hook up an extra engine for some extra power onto this system, we could do that as well. And in this case, we are going to make a small injector engine. This injector engine will not be very efficient, and that's why we're, why we're going to set it to priority negative one. So it's only needed if we really need to. Let's turn down the power consumption needed and build this little uh, injector engine. And there we go, we have connected up some uh, uh, exhaust on several sides of the cylinder, so we can now hook it up into this system. And this particular inline turbocharger isn't uh, used very much, so we'll connect it up directly here. And if needed, we would have needed to divide up this system a little bit. So, for example, if we can go in here, we can see the priority is negative one. And this one, of course, will not be very efficient in terms of materials per second. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the power use. So we set up to 1000 more. And this means that this engine goes to uh, full output. And this engine is also starting to create power. And uh, because this engine is uh, inputting uh, exhaust into this uh, turbocharger, it is getting reused and further increasing the material efficiency of this little middle engine, since we do re reuse the material of this uh, auxiliary injector engine. Now this injector engine isn't very efficient, so it should only be used if it has to be used. So make sure that the middle engine and also the base engine is big enough, because this is only an auxiliary engine that should be needed if something gets broken or if you need to use some extra uh, power onto your system, like jammers or something like that. In any case, this is the basics on how to reuse the exhaust gas. And as said, you know, this thing, we kind of uh, use more pressure than we like can. So for example, we could divide this up a little bit by hooking it up to this one as well, like this. And now you can see that both of these are uh, using 6 of 6 pressure, making the mill engine even more efficient. Now that's basically how to do it. So now I will proceed and show you some examples of the three stage engines I've uh, created and made little blueprints of. Because this is a nice showcase model, but it isn't really compact and uh, something you want to make a blueprint of. Now this is the engine block I have showed you before on a previous video. And it's a little setup uh, with a radiator because cooler engines are more efficient. And if we drag out the power use a lot here, you can see this is our supercharger base engine. And it funnels its uh, exhaust into this little middle um, turbocharger setup here. 
which is uh, efficient and nice. Uh, uh, and then we also have an auxiliary injector engine like this, a little power flower. Uh, that's of course reusing the exhaust into these inline turbochargers so that it's uh, much more efficient. So that's basically how it's set up. It's a nice big block and all in all it produces 2500 power while being kind of efficient. Next up we have this little setup which is an interesting design that's kind of difficult to see through and it uses a lot of radiators to keep down the cooling. It's a compact three stage, uh, it has a base power of 420 uh, and it uh, moves up to uh, 1k. It moves up to 1k with this little interesting carburetor engine here. So that's nice and all. And on top here we also have a little tiny auxiliary um, injector engine that looks really weird just to provide some extra power if needed. So this engine is definitely only for a build that uh, uses maximum 1000 power and usually uh, less. But it's kind of efficient and nice. Alright, hope this was useful and gave you some nice idea on how to reuse that exhaust for more efficient engines. And that's all for multi-stage engine. This is Jim Edison, Total Nerdist Channel, Instant Tutorials, signing out.